Big solar flares are here to stay, with multiple Earth-directed solar storms on their way. Those stories and more in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.com edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Space weather this week is really picking up in activity. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we do have a bunch of active regions in Earth view, and some of them are flare active. In fact, region 3288, which has been firing some big solar flares, is now rotating to the sun's far side, so soon we won't have to worry about it. And all our focus will be on the east limb because we've got three of them. Region 3293, 96, and 97 have all been firing big solar flares in the R1 to R2 level radio blackout, and that's not going to change. Meanwhile, we have two coronal holes that are going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone and getting us some fast solar wind here over the next couple days. But that's really not the big story because it's going to be impacted by multiple solar storms. On the 4th, we had region 3296 launch a solar storm kind of to the east of Earth, but it does have an Earth directed component and that kind of set up the stage because we on the fifth we had a filament eruption that began to launch to the east and that caused a chain reaction and you see boom boom and region 3296 and 97 both then launched a bigger part of a solar storm so we have now a second solar storm that's earth directed and as you can see it in chronographs you see both on the fourth you can see a, a little halo a really weak halo and then on the fifth another weak halo so we have two earth directed solar storms that are coming toward Earth. They're going to graze us mainly, but combined with the fast solar wind that we're expected to see, man, this could be a decent solar storm. Not expecting it to be nearly as intense as the G4 level we just had, but it could give us some decent aurora even down to mid-latitudes. Switching to our M-flare and radio blackout threat meter, as we take a look at the X-ray flux over the past week, we've actually been sitting above the seafloor, which means by proxy the solar flux continues to be high and well into triple digits. In fact, we've actually popped a big M-class flare and R2-level radio blackout back on the first, but it was very short-lived. Since then, things quieted down until about the third, and then you see pop, 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 pop. This is when region 3293 started to get really flare active. Once again, only small, in, uh, short-lived uh, radio blackouts, but nonetheless, something to be watching for. It definitely causes noise on the bands, even if you don't get total fades uh, if you're an amateur radio operator. But now, as of the 4th, this was from region 3296. This is a gradual flare, much longer duration radio blackout. So these are now on the menu. This is due to a, a solar storm that was launched to the east of Earth. So now, not only are we dealing with region 3293, but also 3296 that has been firing big flares and possibly 3297 now. So amateur radio operators, get ready. This kind of pop, pop, pop is going to continue. So expect extra noise on the bands and expect periodic radio blackouts. Switching to our solar storm conditions, things have been pretty quiet since that big G4 level solar storm we had back on the 23rd and 24th. In fact, we actually were storming above G2 levels for over 15 hours before things began to calm down. And that's one of the reasons why we had such great aurora show in so many places. But meanwhile, since then, we've actually had things be pretty quiet. We've jumped up to active levels and almost storm conditions because of some grazing solar storms and a few pockets of fast solar wind, but nothing super substantial. And over the last couple days, we've really gotten down and been pretty quiet, pretty much settled, unsettled to quiet conditions. But this isn't going to last because we do have that set of solar storms that are on their way, plus the fast solar wind. It really could ramp up, especially on the 7th and last possibly through the 8th before things will calm back down. And so Aurora photographers, you should make sure you are ready. 
And since we have that set of Earth-directed solar storms on their way, I can think of no better way to get inspired than to highlight some aurora photos from that recent G4 solar storm we just had. Twitter was absolutely on fire, and I could not begin to share all the photos and videos that were sent in to me, but I thank every aurora photographer and field reporter all your work is absolutely making our community grow by leaps and bounds. So here's just a little hint of some of the photos that were shared with me and videos that were shared with me during this amazing storm. And believe it or not, more like that will be coming and probably sooner than you think. So here's a beautiful shot from Lithuania. And we had Aurora in Poland. And it was seen in the south of England, like in Wales and it made it clear down to France. And Aurora was also seen in Spain. And believe it or not, <clears throat> it was seen in China, <laughs> of all places. And then Aurora, as we moved over to the Western Hemisphere, Aurora was seen all over Canada. And I'm not going to share as many photos because Can Canadians, you always get all the shows. So I'm just going to show a few of them. Here's some gorgeous views from Manitoba. And it was seen in Saskatchewan. And of course, it was seen in Alberta. And as we dipped down into the United States, Aurora was seen 30 miles outside of New York City. That's how bright it was. And it was seen in Pennsylvania. And also in Tennessee. Aurora was seen even as far south as Texas and in New Mexico, and Arizona, Southern Arizona, and as well as South, Southern California. And believe it or not, you be the judge. Was it seen in Florida? There's an open debate as to whether or not that might have actually been Aurora in Florida. And now as we go down under, Aurora was seen all over places like Tasmania, and of course, New Zealand. And it was even seen in Victoria, Australia, and as far north as Canberra. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun just a little bit from the side. And as we take a look at Stereo's view, you can actually see the coronal holes about mid-disc. Those are the same coronal holes that are going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here over the next couple of days, and that's going to get you oriented, hopefully. And if you take a look past that, you can see all of the bright regions, both in the north and in the south. These are the regions that are just beginning to rotate into Earth view. They are definitely beginning to boost that solar flux just a tiny bit. But as you can see, there's a lot of flare activity, a lot of gurgling and burgling near that east limb, and you can watch some solar storms being launched periodically. This tells us that we definitely have some solar storm activity in these regions that could, once they begin to rotate into the Earth strike zone, could also send some Earth-directed solar storms our way. Plus, we do have some glow on that east limb. That might be the uh, big flare player that we are expecting that actually launched a beautiful uh, eruption on the sun's far side and gave us a gorgeous halo in coronagraphs. So we're keeping our eyes on this region, hoping that when it rotates into view, we'll get a better look at it. But amateur radio operators and emergency responders expect that solar flux to stay up, expect that radio noise to continue to stay in the moderate range, and expect more radio blackouts. Switching to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil, this is NASA's version of the model, and you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. Now, the first set of solar storms that was launched on the 4th was actually a set of two solar storms that were launched rapid fire. You can see them one after the other. These are going to impact Earth Early on the 7th, it looks right now. But remember, they set the stage for the chain reaction to launch that bigger solar storm. And that bigger solar storm, you can see it launching out here. And it looks like it's going to also hit Earth on the 7th, but this time late on the 7th. So expect to have kind of like a one, two, three punch because we've got the first set of solar storms, the second solar storm, and the fast solar wind coming. It isn't going to give us a level of a G4 storm like we had before, so don't worry about that. But we could get some decent Aurora. So get ready for some more shows. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the full moon phase. 
on our way to a third quarter, and by the 12th, the moon will still be about 51% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe some aurora from some coming solar storms, or even the Eta Aquarids meteor shower from Halley's Comet, you're going to need to check your local rise and set times, because this bright companion is going to be interfering. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the impact from those multiple solar storms and the fast solar wind, so it could be a really good week of storming. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting at least a major storm conditions, possibly strong solar storm conditions, really up to about a 50% chance of a strong solar storm, with things peaking right about the 8th. So Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could really get a decent show, an extended show. Now for Aurora photographers at mid-latitudes, well, things are looking still pretty good. We are expecting a G2 level. That's a major solar storm. We have about a 30% chance of a strong storm at mid-latitudes, but it's really going to depend upon how fast that fast solar wind is and whether or not these storms have the right magnetic configuration to really give us a, a nice showing at mid-latitudes. And that could last until about the beginning of the week, possibly into about Tuesday before things settle down, so it's definitely a good time to go aurora hunting. Switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we do have about eight active regions in Earth view right now, and there are a few of them that are quite flare active. In fact, region 3293 is leading the fray with actually being an X-flare player right now. And all of this is keeping our solar flux really well boosted. We're well into the triple digits, sitting about the 150s right now, which means uh, radio propagation on Earth's dayside will continue to be good. The fact, though, is that we have to deal with moderate noise on the bands right now because of all of the radio noise due to these very active regions. We are expecting, uh, NOAA's giving us about a 55% chance of M-class flares, which is an R1 to R2 level radio blackout over the next few days, and that's easily going to continue possibly in through next week. We also have about a 10 to 15% chance of an R3 radio blackout over the next day or two. That is going to calm down just a little bit, but we'll see with these new regions rotating into view how much that calms us down all overall. Uh, we are definitely going to continue to watch these uh, regions, and with those new regions rotating into view, this is likely likely going to continue all through next week. Switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week. Everything is in the green right now when it comes to big radiation storms. We are in the D1 normal range. That's because we don't have any active radiation storms right now. That's also the S0 level. But we do have about a 10% chance of a radiation storm at the S1 to S2 level here over the next day or two, and things will begin to settle down after that. And this is mainly due to region 3288, which is rotating to the sun's west limb right now, and that always boosts that chance for radiation storms. So if you happen to be a pilot, uh, definitely check those ICAO advisories to make sure that everything stays in the clear. But right now it looks pretty good and things should definitely settle down over the next couple days. So the space weather this week is getting very exciting. Not only do we have a couple Earth-directed solar storms on their way, but we also have some fast solar wind, and that could bring aurora down to mid-latitudes, easily starting the 6th and possibly through the 8th and maybe even the 9th before things settle down. So aurora photographers, you know what to do. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, we've been dealing with those short duration radio blackouts, but now they're turning into longer duration radio blackouts on Earth's day side because these solar storms are being launched as well. So you're just going to have to deal with a lot of noise on the bands and these, these uh, radio blackouts on Earth's day side easily over this week and possibly next week. Make sure you bump up to higher frequencies uh, if you're doing amateur radio. And then, of course, on the Earth's night side, when these solar storms hit, well, you need to go to lower frequencies, and that will help you out on Earth's night side. So it's going to be kind of a fun little game that you need to play over the next couple days. And now GPS users, well, you know, things are not looking all that great for you right now. You have to deal with radio blackouts on Earth's day side, and on the night side, you're going to have to deal with a, a big solar storm and aurora. So really, if you're anywhere near dawn and dusk, you're going to have issues with GPS reception. And if you're on Earth's night side, definitely stay away from aurora because that could cause issues with your GPS reception as well. And if you're a drone pilot, please be sure to calibrate your magnetometers often or otherwise you're going to get drift. 
I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.